welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. Hello everybody. I'm sure as you can tell from this thumbnail, this is going to be fluffy. And I mean fluffy. With that being said, you better soak this up because a future project I am working on will not be fluffy. So you better enjoy this fluff while you have it. Oh yeah, there is a trigger warning. Too much fluff. Now let's get to the gay because trust me, this is pretty gay. Sigawar fell back on the couch, kicking his feet in the air while laughing hysterically, throwing his phone behind him, nearly knocking the lamp from the side table. Realizing his excitement made an unnecessary amount of noise, he jolted up, hearing a pair of feet scurry to the source. What was that? He tensed like he had been electrocuted. He laughed nervously, scratching the back of his head. Oh, nothing. Just clumsy me. Iwazumi squinted his eyes, never knowing Sigawara to be clumsy. He walked up towards his lover, pinning him to the couch. And why should I believe you? The setter gasped, placing a hand to his chest. Are you saying you, you don't believe me? I'm wounded, Iwa. He could barely contain his laughter, seeing the latter noticing his poor acting ability, yet still leaned in closer. Fine. On the count of three, we both apologize? Apologize? What for? His eyes widened in pure confusion. For almost giving me a heart attack with your clumsiness. He emphasized the word. Sigura tried wiggling out of his grip. This was bad. Iwazumi had cut on. Now the only mission was to abort. We both apologize at the count of three. He nodded his head, but kept his lips sealed shut. One. He placed a small kiss on his forehead, knocking a few strands of the setter's silver hair back. Two. He placed another underneath his eye where his birthmark laid. This made the smaller giggle, knowing that that was the ace's favorite spot to shower with kisses. Three. Instead of hearing an apology from either of them, Iwazumi was surprised at the outcome of their truce. Now I'm just disappointed in both of us. Sugawa couldn't keep his facade anymore and laughed aloud, swinging his arms around the brunette's neck and pulling him down, matching their lips together. They both smiled into the kiss, Iwazumi's hands roaming up and down the ladder's side before letting one of his hands get lost in his silver locks. Their chests were pressed against one another before the setter slipped his hand underneath Iwazumi's shirt, feeling his muscles tense where he was leaning down, his lips traveled down the suga's neck. Did you ever find out what that noise was? Daichi froze in his tracks, his worry dissipating to nothing, seeing his lovers making out on the couch, and said he crossed his arms, leaning on the doorframe, smirking. Yes? No, no, carry on. Iwazumi groaned, finally detaching his lips from the setter's neck, admiring the faint marks left behind. Enjoying the show? I even got front row seats. Feeling flush, Iwazumi sat up, miserably hiding his face, but failing to do so when Okawa, who just walked in, teased him. Is our Iwachan flustered? He ran up to the couch, poking his cheeks. How adorable. He cooed, sitting up and smushing Iwazumi's cheeks together, making his lips stick out. Wait, what's that smell? He sniffed the air before getting up close to Sugawara again. Oh wait, it's you. He laughed, the silver-haired setter gasped, swatting at his hand. Fine, but want to take a shower with me? He flushed again, just imagining taking a shower with the setter, especially knowing how provocative he could be. He thought that Okawa was the flirty one in the relationship, however, after adjusting more into their newfound relationship, he was proven wrong real quick. Sugura definitely tops the cake. 
No way, I just took one. He almost wanted to take it back, seeing his expression fall. The guilt began to seep into his features whenever Oikawa offered to go instead. I want to go with you. He launched himself over Iwazumi, wrapping his arms around the setter's neck. The two began laughing and even rolled off the couch, almost taking the ace down with them. Alright, go get in the shower before you break something. He chuckled, extending his hand out, pulling both setters up before plopping onto the couch and pulling Iwazumi into his arms, enjoying the little peace and quiet they had before Okawa and Suga got out of the shower. This is nice. He snuggled his head into the cook of Daichi's neck, taking in his alluring scent. That it is. Finally making it to the bathroom with the law stumbling on the way, maybe Sugawa was finally hitting his clumsy era, they stripped naked and jumped into the shower. Oikawa turned the knob to where the water was steaming hot, the condensation from the heat quickly clattered the bathroom. With damp hair, Oikawa was given a chance to admire the flawless beauty that was his lover right next to him. <laughs> what? He tilted his head to the side, questioning why the taller's eyes were glued on him. He replied by slowly dragging them both under the running shower head, letting the droplets of water fall on their heads and travel down their bodies. It was as if the clouded room substituted for Arakawa's now clear mind. He knew what was in front of him was real, and where he belonged. You're so fucking perfect. He looked down at the ladder with hazy eyes, water washing over his eyelashes, down his jaw before crossing over his collarbone and pecs, traveling lower and lower. His cheeks flushed a bright red. Trying to look away from both of you and sudden comment. Maybe having the two most flirtatious ones in the relationship taking a shower together might have been a bad idea. No, I'm not. I'm not as perfect as you may think. I beg to differ. He wrapped his arms around the ladder's bare waist, pulling him closer. Sugawara's hand pressed against the brunette's chest, lightly pushing back, trying to make the conversation more stricter. I'm serious. I'm a mess, Toru. I don't... really have my life together. Like how I let go, realizing that this was going into something more deeper, he reached over, grabbing the shampoo bottle, rubbing it into Suga's soft hair. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, there isn't really much to talk about. You all have a plan for your life and I... don't. He turned around, making it easier for the setter's finger to roam through his scalp. I thought you wanted to be a teacher. I do, or at least I thought I did. There was a moment of silence, making him more frustrated at himself. He took the time for the shampoo to be rinsed out to gather his thoughts. I just... I can't even teach Kagiyama and Hinata. I don't stand a chance actually teaching. Mikawa nodded his head, combing through his silver hair, pushing it back so he could see Suga in a much clearer light. Well, to be fair, Tobio-chan is Tobio-chan. He's dense as hell. Plus, without you and Blondie, they wouldn't have passed the retake exams. You are, and will be, a wonderful teacher. We all believe in you. He lowered down, kissing the setter's forehead, making him smile. It was reassuring to know that someone believed in him. Self-doubt may always be a thing, but he had all three of them by his side. Thank you, love. That really means a lot, more than you know. It was his turn to beam with a bright smile. He picked up the shampoo bottle, holding it in the air. Your turn to wash my hair. He shook his head, making the lad gasp. Why not? I washed yours. 
That's because I was going through a midlife crisis. He huffed, crossing his arms. Okawa began to look defeated. Honey, you're barely an adult. I'd hardly call that a midlife crisis. He stood true to his point by not uttering another word. The brunette decided to be just as stubborn by pulling out Sugawara's most hated nickname. Fine, Mr. Refreshing. He immediately saw his hazel eyes dart lasers at him. I guess I'll do it myself. Don't call me that. You said you wouldn't use that one. I never said that. Yes, you did. I didn't, Suga. He used his name as a playful warning. It was only after their playful banter that he remembered the prank he was supposed to be doing. Yes, you did. You know I hate that name, Toru. You know what? Fine. I didn't want to be the one to have to say this, but you left me no other choice. The taller raised his eyebrow, while Suga huffed out his chest, refusing to back down. Aliens aren't real, and milk bread is shit. Oikawa gasped, genuinely feeling as if he got shocked in the chest. Koshi! Shit! You did it. Rat shit! Oikawa stumbled backwards, thinking he were actually falling. Sugawara reached out, catching his arm, but he didn't know the soap soaked at the bottom of the tub where his foot slipped from under him. He yelped, feeling gravity take him down to the bottom of the tub. He hissed, feeling the back of his head hit the handrail. Almost immediately, he heard Oikawa calling out his name, but it became a haze. He was blinking rapidly, trying to read the black dots dancing in his vision. Koshi? Shit, are you okay? He pulled him up into a sitting position, noticing his irregular behavior, already examining the area that got hit. Cool. He looked up, only able to put together a few splotches of him in his vision, the darkness increasing by the second. What is it? I think I'm going... He slumped into the setter's arms, not being able to finish his sentence. Koshi? Koshi! His breath hitched, throwing himself out of the shower and dragging the smeller out, away from the running water, and reached for the towel to cover him. Fuck. Daichi! Iwa! He screamed out, not knowing what else to do. He was trying desperately not to panic, knowing it would result into an attack. However, he realized he was failing miserably, already feeling his lungs burning into an inferno. It wasn't long until two pairs of footsteps thundered closer to him and the door swung open, nearly smashing the handle through the wall. What happened? The ace crouched down, already examining the unconscious setter. I... He... Daichi went towards Akawa, who barely managed to compose himself, yet continued speaking. Toru, breathe. It's okay. He'll be okay. He hit his head. He isn't bleeding or anything, but he was awake before he just collapsed. After confirming that there was still no blood, it was even concluded that the reason he blacked out may have included all of the heat from the shower. It didn't help that he had hit his head. In a way, the shock of the blow made it exceedingly difficult to bear the heat. Okay, we will just get him to the bed and cool him off. See, it's fine. He'll wake up soon. He grunted, squatting down picking up the setter. Both players from Aberjosa couldn't help but admire his thighs coming back up. Daichi chuckled, noticing the two pairs of eyes on him. <laughs> Come on. He's gonna want some company when he wakes up. They both hopped on their feet, Okawa stumbling a bit before the ace grabbed him on the arm. Damn it. Yeah. No more long hot showers. Understood. <laughs> he held his towel up to his chest, trying to shake his dizziness. I hadn't realized how long we spent in there. It was well over an hour. 
He happily smiled on that. It seemed that whenever he spent any time with his lovers, even if it was just talking, time flew by so quickly, it almost made him sad. One day, they would be old, and he would be left to wonder where the time went. Both siders being sat on the bed, Daichi left to get some ice water, placing Suga's cup on the nightstand and handing Okawa his. Slowly taking small sips, he let his eyes roam, now feeling considerably cooler, even being in Daichi's arms. He glanced back at the setter, surprised to see a pair of golden brown eyes stare right back at him. Koshi! Suddenly, everyone's attention was on him. Suga replied with a soft smile, leaning back onto them with Iwazumi behind. Are you... I'm fine. I feel fine, at least. The ace frowned, but trusted his answer wholeheartedly. They had never kept anything from each other, so it was unlikely that he would start now, especially if it was regarding his own well-being. Okay, just let us know if you feel weird, like nauseous or lightheaded, or... I get it. <laughs> he giggled, reaching over to grab his hand, giving it a gentle squeeze of reassurement. Has anyone seen my phone? I'll get it. You left it in the bathroom. However, Daichi was quick to retort. No, I'll get it. I don't need you blacking out on us as well. Iwazimi scoffed, earning a harsh slap from the setter. I could have handled it. Yeah, on the floor? At least I wasn't in the bathtub. Sugawara flashed, realizing him blacked out completely naked. Yeah. That was embarrassing. Daichi came back with his phone. He smirked, getting ready to tell Hinata and Kenma he followed through with the prank, but not really, since it kind of defeated the whole purpose, becoming the real thing, but he swiped on a new contact. After all, what's a good prank without a certain pair of twins? Yes, you heard it right. The Mia twins are being introduced into the poly pranks. So this would be uh, what Saku Atsu, Kita, and also Suna Komo Aka. Hold on, that that might be right. Maybe not. I mean, honestly, you should be surprised at how long it took me to get down Boku Aka Kodoken, Sukiyama Kagihina, and Daisuke Uoi. It's a tongue twister, and now I'm adding more ships. Why am I doing this to myself? Any gaze, there is your fluff. So enjoy this and soak it up while you can because next week is not going to be kind. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you'd like to be kept up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.